Hey everybody, welcome back here to Cryptic Woodworks. I know it's been a little while. I've just been busy doing some other life projects that show up, you know, the type of things that happen around the house. <clears throat> so a while ago I had some people asking me how I was actually making my cipher wheels. I thought, you know, that would actually be a really good video series for me to do. So that's what I'm going to start on doing here. So I have this cipher wheel. This is one of my symbol and letter cipher wheels. We can see it's got both the symbols and the letters. Uh, it's made from, this one is a three quarter inch plywood. And it's got the nice rotating inner wheel. You know, lets you create all those different cool ciphers. But we're gonna start uh, kind of from scratch here and talk about how we make one. So I'll set that aside. So we begin with a blank. And I'm gonna start today with just making the body of the cipher wheel, so not the rotating inner ring piece. Because these are a couple of different steps that we have to go through to make this. So the first thing I do is I wanna coat the piece with this product called Aura Mask. Uh, this you can buy online and it's a type of stencil film. And what we're gonna do is normally a stenciler would lay out a, a piece of this. They would go ahead and carve their stencil on it then they would peel the backing, put it down, and then paint over top of it. Uh, we're going to apply this to our blank, and then we're going to see and see through that. So I've already gone. I cut myself a piece of this. So now we just fold the corner a bit here so we can grab it. We'll take our backing off. Toss that off to the side. And then I try to do my best from working behind the camera. And we just lay that down. I'll smooth it out lightly by hand. But then what you really need to do is to come in and with some type of like a card scraper, um, actually some old System 3 one I had from somewhere, a credit card works pretty well, something like that. Um, you want to really kind of put the pressure on this and smooth it down pretty hard. Because uh, you want to make sure that this can't pull up when you're carving through it. I have had trouble doing small letters, something like an A or an O that has a small piece in the middle, uh, little tiny bits. Sometimes it'll pull up and then what will happen is that letter won't carve as well. So what I do is I smooth it down, going with the grain first, and then I'll turn it another 90 degrees. And we'll smooth this, do the same thing, but this time against the green. And this ensures they get a really good bond between these two. And let me tell you, especially after it sits a little and you put all this pressure on it, uh, I've actually kind of found it rather hard to peel off at times, uh, which I consider to be kind of a good thing. Because the reason we're going to do this is we'll carve the letters through it and then paint the letters and then take this masking off. And we're left with a really good crisp lettering in place that shows up really well. All right, after I do that, I don't mind coming through and just uh, trimming off any long corners with a little exacto knife here. And I will say, if you get into doing some kind of this work, you see me. Uh, on this mat here, these are called self-healing mats or these craft type mats. So a little expensive, but you know, as you get into doing this kind of stencil work or a lot of cutting with X-Acto knives, man, are these things just, uh, they're worth their weight in gold. <clears throat> you know, they'll last to really forever and they keep you from cutting lines all over your bench. And you can find it at uh, most craft or hobby stores. And there, I got all my little pieces off there. Okay, so now that we have this all coated, it's time for us to move over to the CNC. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm actually getting a little ahead of myself. Uh, one of the last things we want to do is, is to mark our center point because I'm going to uh, start my CNC carving from the center of this in order to make the octagon. So I will lay just a large ruler down here so I can get to the center. 
And being dead on is not super critical on this project. My blanks are a little bit oversized, which means that I have some material along the edges that's actually going to come off. And since I'm carving out from the center, I'm always going to reference off of the center point. And you know, we'll see how I do that once we're over on the CNC. All right, we got our center. We can switch over. Okay, over here at the control software, you can see I've got my uh, software laid out for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to carve this letter ring around it. I've got my uh, center point set here. And what this will do is it'll carve each letter for me, each of the divider lines, and then the outside ring. And this is just going to be step one of the process. We'll do several cuts to drill the center point, clear out the center, then we'll flip it over and do some cutting and carving on the other side. That's just to set up one of the body blanks. Over here at the CNC, I've got my blank set up. I've already gone and zeroed the machine out. And right now I have installed a 30 degree pencil bit. It's a very, very narrow bit. Carves a uh, very nice line and gets into uh, some extreme detail. So I'll start this up. We'll probably just let it go for a few letters. I'll either fast forward or trim it through. You don't need to watch all of that run. I got a pretty nice carve. Uh, just about all of my letters look good. Very slight chip out on a W over here, but nothing that I can't work with and do a little correction after the fact. I usually find a W, an A, or a 4 are going to be my troublesome letters and numbers to hit. So next I'm going to start carving out the center of this. And what I want to do is just put a profile line around the edge so that I know I keep a, a nice clean edge on here. And I'm going to do that with an eighth inch down cut spiral which I've already installed uh, so I'm going to, going to go ahead and run that it's a real quick cut now we're going to switch to a quarter inch bit that will come and drill my center hole and then hog out all of the waste in the middle So that's it for that cut really fast. All it does is just give me that uh, nice little edge line around here, which once the fuzz of the Aura mask is taken off will be nice and clean. So I'm going to switch over to the quarter inch bit. I'm going to put the hole in the center and then clean out the middle of that. And I'm not going to go ahead and put that on uh, uh, video here since that's basically just cutting in a whole lot of little circles. Uh, plus I need the dust boot on. No reason to watch this thing move around with just a dust boot. So I'll be back once I get those two jobs done. Look at that. Center's all nicely carved out. Got nice crisp lines around the edge. Uh, you may notice when I was doing it, probably when I was vacuuming, the uh, some of the stick-on or the, uh, the mask and the A came off. Um, don't freak out. One of the easy ways around that, and we'll see when I kind of get to that point, is I can stick a new little piece on there, seal it down, then just cut off any excess. You know, it'll be like there was never a problem. So I've got my center hole in at this point. 
And so far I haven't moved this block and everything has happened from this center point right here. This means everything is concentric around that point and that's what I always want to keep. So at this point I can actually take it off, I can flip it over and we can start working on the back side of it because we've got a few little uh, operations to do. However, we can use this center point as our reference to make sure that we always stay directly around that point. So that's what we're going to do. I'll get it set back up and then we'll take a look at it when I'm there. All right, I flipped our board over and then what I do is since I have a quarter inch hole drilled in the center, I drop my bit right into that and then I zero out my CNC so that I know that I'm still concentric right around this hole. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to drill eight holes partway through just about a quarter inch into this board. And these will be used for a later step when we go to turn this into an octagon. I don't do the uh, octagon cutout on here because I find that this CNC, the gantry has a little bit of flex to it. You know, so I can actually move things a little bit here. And that I don't always get the greatest cuts when I'm doing the octagonal cutout of this piece. So I do that on the table saw. And we'll see when I get to that point why I've put these alignment holes in place. So I'm going to go and drill these quick and then I'll show you what they look like. Okay, here's our piece with our eight little alignment holes around it. Like I said uh, on a uh, another video, we'll show how I use these to actually turn this into an octagon. So the last thing we're going to do is cut just a little bit of a, a relief around this hole. Uh, so for when we're putting the you know the final bolt in at the end that secures the centerpiece into here. So I just cut that on the CNC while I have everything here. So I'll do that and show you what that looks like. And that sure is one of the easier jobs. All I do is uh, just cut a uh, slightly relief around it. So that way, you know, when that screw goes through, the head can stay below the surface and then the whole piece can sit flat. So the only other thing I have left to do on the back here is to carve my Cryptic Woodworks logo into it. Because no project is complete without a logo. And then this will wrap up the CNC on the bottom part. So I'll get set up for that. I'll have to put a little bit more origin or a mask on here. And I can go ahead and switch to the 30 degree pencil bit and carve that in. So I'll see you after we get that done. Alright, here we are with one finished body piece done. So as you can see, I've got uh, all my letters carved. I've got my center cut out, center hole in. Now, like I said, I had a few spots. Like here in the W, there's a uh, uh, chipped away a little bit underneath, but I can handle that. A little bit of uh, uh, piece came off of the A. It's very easy to fix. Nothing much that you can't take care of with just a little bit of ingenuity and uh, a knife. Uh, on the back, we've got uh, our center hole put in place. We've got all of our alignment holes, and we've got our Cryptic Woodworks logo on there. Uh, again, I lost just a little bit of the, the film on the top of one of the O's there. Uh, very easy to take care of that, no big deal. Um, we can just stick a little tiny piece down there, or even after it's painted, you can come back with a knife and just scrape some of the paint off, and you'll never be able to tell the difference that anything was ever there to start with. All right, so this does it for putting one of the bodies together. So coming up next, we'll talk about... Uh, what these alignment holes do on the bottom and how we turn this into an octagon. Then of course after that we still have actually making the center wheel which is more carving and then doing the top wheel uh, which has its own little bit of fun put in to make these things connect. All right so I hope you enjoy this part one of creating a cipher wheel and that you'll stick around for the next parts as I go ahead and release them. As always, stay dusty.